Football has entertained the world for many decades and still, it is continuing to become a global sensation. There are many football clubs that have captured millions of hearts, but Manchester United in England was once the pride of the United Kingdom. It was the most successful club in the country, but sadly over the past few decades, it has seen a drastic decline. From their domination in the football world to their mismanagement and poor recruitment. In this video, Teju Studio will discuss the key factors that have contributed to Manchester United's decline and its implications in terms of the future of the club. Ronaldo! Before the Glazers officially took over Manchester United in 2005, Malcolm Glazer quietly acquired a significant portion of the club's shares starting in 2003. By 2005, he had majority ownership, allowing him to take full control. To buy the club, the Glazers borrowed a lot of money, nearly 1,072 million US dollars. They used the club's assets as collateral for these loans. These loans had high interest rates, and the Glazers didn't pay them off for the first five years, despite the interest piling up. In 2010, Manchester United issued approximately 670 million US dollars in bonds to help manage their debts. By November 2010, the Glazers finally paid off the PIK loans, but the club was still heavily in debt. To further manage their finances, the Glazers sold some shares of Manchester United through an initial public offering in 2012 on the New York Stock Exchange. While Manchester United continued to enjoy success under the management of Sir Alex Ferguson, there were already signs of decline that were beginning to emerge. With the emergence of Manchester City, it backed by significant financial investment, threatened United's dominance. Ferguson's ability to lead his players can be shown in the 2013 title winning. In 2013, Sir Alex Ferguson, the legendary coach of Manchester United, retired from his job, leaving a big gap that was hard to fill. Along with Ferguson leaving, the club also lost CEO David Gill. After Ferguson left, they hired David Moyes as the new coach. But Moyes' time at the club was tough, and it started a rough period for Manchester United. He signed a six-year contract but it didn't last long. Before United, Moyes had managed Everton for a long time. But at United, it was not easy for him. Despite winning his first game, the team lost to other big teams like Liverpool and Manchester City soon after. Hence they lost big competitions like the Champions League. Old old junior, what are you saying man? You having a good time? Yeah. Yeah, but United are shit, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. By January 2014, United was in 7th place in the league, which was their worst position in over 20 years. Fans were unhappy, and results weren't improving. So, Moyes was fired in April 2014, just 10 months after he started. He only won 27 out of 51 games in charge. His time at the club showed that replacing Ferguson was harder than expected, and the club didn't have a good long-term plan for the transition. Ryan Giggs took over temporarily while the club searched for a new manager. Eventually, they chose Louis van Gaal in 2014. Before Manchester Uniters he managed top clubs like Ajax and Barcelona. In his first season, United finished fourth in the league. But some players didn't like his style of play, which focused a lot on keeping possession of the ball. United won the FA Cup in 2016. Jesse Lingard with a thumping goal. History before your very eyes. But they finished fifth in the league, and they did not perform well in the Champions League. Fans were upset because the team wasn't playing good and not meeting the club's expectations. Van Gaal was fired after that season because United didn't qualify for the Champions League. He was replaced by Jose Mourinho in 2016. In his first season, United won the EFL Cup and Europa League but finished sixth in the Premier League. The next season, they improved, finishing second in the league and reaching the FA Cup final. However, Mourinho had some issues with some players like Paul Pogba, and his style of play was criticized for being too defensive. In his last full season, United struggled, and Mourinho was fired in December 2018 because of poor results and problems with players and the board. While he won two trophies, Mourinho didn't stick to United's tradition of attacking football and didn't consistently challenge for major titles. After Mourinho left, the club didn't know what to do next, so they made club legend Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in 2018 the interim head coach. 
he got off to a great start, winning his first five games in charge, just like Sir Matt Busby did in 1946. He even won the Manager of the Month award. As a player, Ole spent 11 years at Manchester United and scored some memorable goals. Oh, cutting through this Cardiff. Jesse Lingard against Eskridge. Lingard! Confidence you like. And Manchester United have four. But after that, things took a drastic turn and the team had defensive problems. In 2021, United signed Cristiano Ronaldo, but they still had trouble playing consistently. Ole was fired in November 2021 after some bad results, especially losing heavily to Liverpool and Manchester City. Quest really for Manchester United at the end of it all. The experience of Emery, the way he set his team up, they nullified Manchester United. Overall, Ole had some success, but he also missed some opportunities, like losing the Europa League final. After Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was fired, Ralph Rangnick became the temporary manager of Manchester United in November 2021 until the end of the season. Rangnick is a German coach known for his high-pressing tactics. He tried to introduce his famous, Gegenpressing style of play to United, but unfortunately, it didn't work as the team's performances were up and down. By the end of the season, United didn't make much progress under Rangnick, and they didn't qualify for the Champions League. Many people doubted his ability to lead the team, and the club's board didn't like that he openly talked about the problems at Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag became the new permanent manager of Manchester United in April 2022. He's been working on changing the team's style of play to focus more on pressing and keeping possession of the ball. In his first season, the team's performance has been up and down. They had some good moments but also suffered some heavy defeats, like losing 7-0 to Liverpool. It is another! It's seven for Liverpool! Sensational! Astonishing! Incredible! The greatest win against Manchester United there's ever been has been served up! Ten Hag has made some changes to the squad, bringing in new players like Case Miro, Anthony, and Lisandro Martinez. He's also benched some big-name players, including Cristiano Ronaldo and Harry Maguire, to try to improve the team as a whole. Even though there have been some setbacks, like losing to Manchester City, the team has done better overall compared to the previous season. They even won the EFL Cup. But some fans were not happy as they thought that he was not making the right decisions and not dropping underperforming players like Marcus Rashford. Overall, there's a lot of pressure on Ten Hag to turn things around for Manchester United. Another factor was the recruitment strategy. It was a major problem contributing to its decline. Instead of focusing on players who fit well with the team's culture, they started going for big-name players with bad attitudes. This led to overpaying for players because other clubs knew Manchester United were desperate. They broke transfer records for players like Pogba and Maguire, spending a lot of money on them. Not let's go back to 2005 when Ed Woodward joined Manchester United as the club's first chief financial officer. He played a big role in the Glazer family's takeover of the club that same year. In 2012, he was promoted to executive vice chairman, making him one of the most powerful people at United after the Glazer family. During his time in this role, Woodward focused a lot on growing United's business around the world. This led to a big increase in revenue for the club. But when it came to football, things were mixed. United won some big trophies, but they didn't win the Premier League after Sir Alex Ferguson left in 2013. Fans were not satisfied with Woodward's decisions, especially about signing players and hiring managers. Fans also blamed him for getting rid of managers like David Moyes and Louis van Gaal. In his last few years, fans were protesting a lot against the Glazer family who owned the club, and Woodward took a lot of the blame. In April 2021, he said he would leave his job. He left United in February 2022 after being with the club for 17 years. While Woodward helped United make more money, he got a lot of criticism for the football side of things. And his time at United ended with controversy over his supposed involvement in the Super League plan. In April 2021, Manchester United and 11 other big European clubs announced plans to join a new competition called the European Super League. This new league would compete with the Champions League and have 20 teams, with 15 of them having guaranteed spots. United's executive vice chairman, Ed Woodward, even got a role in this new league. But fans and players, like Bruno Fernandes, were not happy and they went on protests outside Old Trafford before a game against Liverpool. Within just two days, United said they wouldn't be part of the Super League anymore, and Woodward quit his job. 
Other clubs also backed out, and the Super League idea fell apart quickly. This whole thing made United look bad because it seemed like they cared more about making money than winning. Since February 2022, Richard Arnold has been the CEO of Manchester United, taking over from Ed Woodward. He was the managing director before that in 2013. As CEO, Arnold looks after the business side of the club, like making money and building the brand worldwide. He's been more involved with fans than Woodward, meeting with them regularly. John Murto became the club's first football director in March 2021. He's in charge of things like signing new players, managing the academy, and deciding how the team plays. But Murto has been criticized for not signing good players and not being able to sell players for a good price. There have also been disagreements between Arnold and Murto over things like which players to sign and which managers to hire. Overall, Arnold and Murto represent the different priorities of business and football at United. They work together, but they haven't changed much from how things were when Woodward was in charge. At last, to fix Manchester United's problems, they need to take a hard look at themselves. They've strayed from their roots and need to change everything from the top down, including leadership, scouting, and maybe even the manager. Firstly, they need to change their leadership. Then, they should get rid of some players who aren't performing well. Next, they need to completely overhaul their scouting and recruitment system. They need better processes and scouts who can find players who fit with the club's values and aren't overpaid. If United can't make these tough decisions, they risk falling even further down the table. Other teams like Newcastle United, Aston Villa, and Tottenham are getting stronger, and United could end up in mid-table mediocrity. It's sad to see such a great club fall, but they can be a lesson in what happens with neglect, bad leadership, and player power. So will Manchester United ever be at the top again? Comment your answer in the comment box and do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos.